Hey there, friendlies, how's up? Is that too bright? Yeah, that's too bright. Just switch this around a little bit here. Hey there, friendlies, how's up? Welcome to the first Drips and Drabs video of 2023. The past year has been of questionable merit in many, many ways, but in terms of whiskey on this channel, it's been very, very good. I haven't absolutely ragged on anything this year. Um, the marks have been good. The whiskeys have been terrific. I've made some fabulous discoveries. And, you know, so it's just, it's been a great year for that kind of stuff. One thing I do want to mention, and this was sort of spurred on by a comment that John from The Whiskey Neighbor uh, made on this review here. Uh, he said that he was surprised at the mark that this got after the reaction I had, because it was like a, an 80, 85 or something. And I owned up to it immediately, uh, because the mark I gave it for, like, the design, I, I stand behind many things, but I feel that, just going on taste, this was a 92, absolutely, maybe 93. But for some reason, I, I have this fear of coming across like I'm an easy grader, and I don't know why, because this is my channel, these are my taste buds, but... Uh, there's a there's a bunch of bottles here that I feel that I graded a little too harshly Because of that weird fear like this guy here <clears throat> Right, that's the Rassi R01 is it? Yeah, R01 <clears throat> um, What else uh, this guy here the spice tree, I mean That's a terrific bottle now that I've spent some time with it. I'm, I'm absolutely sure that I, I graded it a little too harshly uh, you know, there's a couple here that I feel that way about. I'm not going to harp on it too much because I don't want the video to get all, like, maudlin. But anyways, I'm just acknowledging that because I, I do feel that when you make a mistake, it's good to sort of own up to it. Speaking of mistakes, let's do this, shall we? Just because that one's a little shorter. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's that. Um, great year. The marking may have been a little skewed to the negative. Um, I'll try to sort of fix that for next year, well, or this year, I guess. Now, speaking of the next year and, and coming years, whiskey's getting really expensive. Uh, and I have many thoughts about that. I, I am on record as saying in comments and conversations that <clears throat> I hate the fact that whiskey it has become an aspirational purchase. That's why I don't do secondary, I don't collect, I don't do Macallan. And so the fact that Every, look, everything's expensive. Everything's getting more and more expensive. Whiskey's getting more and more expensive. This channel is not monetized, so this is all out-of-pocket purchases. Now, I mitigate things. I buy from Alberta. I buy on sale. Um, I have shipped in bulk because I have a fiddle player who lives in Alberta, right? Um, but it's still turning into a lot of money. But I'm optimistic. I'm not, I'm not sort of putting a best before date on the channel or anything. I'm just acknowledging that if I do have to sort of slow down or something, uh, it's not because I want to. Um, <clears throat> but that's not what I want to talk to you about. The main point of this video is that I want to do my Whiskey of the Year. And I'm going to do it differently than I did it last year because I noticed uh, very close to um, shooting this that somebody else made my pick their pick and they're bigger well okay they're all bigger channels but um for fear of coming across as like a, a copycat or whatever i've decided instead to do five whiskeys of the year five categories uh <clears throat> excuse me category one is best non-scotch which is slim pickings this year uh, because almost everything i did was scotch uh second is best blend best value than most surprising whiskey, and then just, you know, best freaking dram. Now, to be in contention, it has to be something I not only shot this year, but reviewed. So there's gonna be like no samples, right? Um, this is not in contention because this was not reviewed, even though if it was, holy crap. Uh, but this was my holiday um, dram, so not in contention. And it has to have been on your screens at some point in the year. So I shot this, but it's not up yet. And in fact, 
I referenced this review in the Spice Tree review. I sort of said something about you know the other compass box that I reviewed, but I had forgotten that um, the peat monster wasn't up yet. So I'll have to put that up in early uh, 2023, I think. Um, there's something else here that yes, okay. So this is a Gordon McPhail Mort Mortlock, sorry Mortlock 15. It's from their distillery labels, distillery labels, yeah, line. So that's not their high end uh, stuff. This was kind of affordable, um, but anyways shot but not up yet so those cannot be in the line similarly this uh would have been an absolute contender for for best non-scotch um in fact i don't have a bourbon and canadian because i, I just didn't do enough of those uh but this was not reviewed this was in my old-fashioned video so not in the lineup now that still leaves me. Oh, <laughs> almost forgot. Uh, this is a two brewers single malt. This is from their innovative series. This is number what thirty twenty seven. Um, shot not up yet. Terrific uh, malt. Absolutely great stuff. Now, awkward. Um, those will go up, those reviews will go up um, in 2023, but can I then make them contenders for the 2023 version of this video? Because I didn't shoot them in 2023, but I will have done the second review of each of them. I, like, I don't know. Would that be cheating if I uh, entered them? Let me know down below. Tell me what you think. So, what we got here is still a nice array of whiskeys um, and I think that you know without much further ado let's just get into it now for best non-scotch the pickings are really really slim like non-existent actually just by default best non-scotch is this the Nika whiskey from the barrel here's the thing um, this could be a contender for best value. This could be a contender for best blend. No matter what, this is a terrific little bottle. I love this whiskey. Uh, we're at 51.4% uh, alcohol by volume. There's a hundred different whiskeys in here. The, the flavor is fantastic. This is one that goes on your bar cart. And when you finish it, you buy another one. Friend comes over who doesn't know if they like whiskey. That is the one. It's creamy. It's it's spicy, but not too much. Sweet. So many good flavors. So such a good mouthfeel. Very mouth friendly whiskey. So that's that's our uh, non scotch of the year right there. The Nika whiskey from the barrel. I'll just sort of put it here. Move everything else out of the way. Should have thought of that before I started filming, but what else, right? So, there you go. Uh, the next would be the best blend. Blended malt, blend, what else. And I'm going to go with, again, I didn't shoot a whole lot, but I would still be pretty satisfied with this choice. It's the compass box of the spice tree. I reiterate that I do feel that I graded this harshly. There's a roundness there. It's a it's big on the flavors. Um, I had originally sort of felt that it was a little light on the nose, but bigger on the flavor. Um, I spent a little time with it since then, inside, and uh, mitigation in a big, big way. It's a fabulous, fabulous dram. For best value, you know, it, I've just told you that whiskey is becoming really, really expensive. Can I really keep doing this and blah, blah, blah. Um, but what I have found is consistent is that Aaron really goes hard on the bang for the buck, okay? The Aaron 10, unbelievable. Um, the Bodega, great price. Here in Quebec, this port cask finish and the Bodega are the exact same price. And it's a fabulous price. It's under 100 bucks. Okay, no age statement, but uh, don't care. Don't care. It's an integrity bottling, as, as Ralphie would say. We're talking 50% on the dot. We're talking 
non chill filtered. We're talking natural color. It, it's delicious. It's absolutely fabulous. So, best value is the Aaron port cask finish. For most surprising, I don't think anyone who's watched this channel for the past year will be shocked when I do this. Benromic Contrast Series Organic. As someone who has bought a lot of organic stuff and still does, um, I've become sort of accepting of big money for little pleasure in certain ways, and this is great. It's the reverse of both of those. It doesn't cost a lot. This could have easily been my value malt. The flavors are great. The, the um, It's great on the nose. Uh, we're at 46%. Kind of would like to have tried that at 50%, but you know, it's got sort of a stealth age statement on it. I believe it was nine years, right? Distilled 2012, bottled 2021. Integrity bottling, you know, no chill filtering, no caramel coloring. So my biggest surprise, a happy, happy surprise, was how much I loved the Benromic Contrasts Organic. So that brings us to what I would have called my Whiskey of the Year. But because of other channels, I'm just calling the best freaking dram of 2022, okay? And that absolutely is this guy right here. This is the Port Charlotte Heavily Peated 10-year I'm already down to here, and I only reviewed this like a week or two ago. I, so good. So delicious. Great on the nose, great in the bottle. Very little of that medicinal crap that I don't like in so many I Love Peets. Um, it's, it's really light on the band-aid. It's really heavy on so many good, good things. And because of the mix of caskings, like there's a red wine finish in there as well. It's got some fruit and some sweet and, and sort of a, an orchardy element across the top that I just find absolutely enchanting. And it says heavily peated, but it doesn't punch you out. Like it really sits well in the mix. Uh, so no doubt at all. 2022's best freaking dram is the Port Charlotte heavily peated 10 year. Now, let me just move some of these aside for a second here. Ah, my camera stopped. I hope that we're not missing anything important. But what I do want to say is that for 2023, I have a very simple plan and I need you guys to help me with it. I have a bunch of shoulder pour reviews to do um, because that's part of the conceit of the entire channel. Uh, so what I want to do is shoot a neck pour next video, like right off the bat, and then rip through a few uh, shoulder pour, like get some of the backlog out of the way. Partly so that I can bottle down some of these bottles. I'm afraid to go any further on some of them until I've shot second reviews. So, for the neck pour video, help me to choose what it should be. Here are the contenders. One, Port Charlotte Heavily Peated Isla Barley 2013. I'm very curious to see if I'm going to notice a difference at all. And if I do, how big a difference is it? Um, so that's one contender. Can you see that? There we go. Should it be? This is a North Star Loch Lomond 14. I don't really know if I should do this because this is one of those um, super limited bottles, right? How 234 bottles. So it, it, is reviewing this just like an exercise in futility because nobody can buy it practically? So I don't know. I'm excited to taste it but I don't know if it should be reviewed. I have Edradour Caledonia, that's a 12 year, I believe. Yes, at 46%. Um, 
the only other Edra Dower I've done was the 10 year distillery edition, distiller's edition, whatever. And I was not spectacularly happy with it. So I'm a little shy of this, but I've been told that it's a whole lot better. Should it be? Red breast, 12 year cask strength. This I'm very curious about. It seems to be one of the most popular bloody whiskeys around, let me tell you. I also have a Bunnahabin Stuvridur. I've had this for going on a, oh, actually it's, it's full of dust. <laughs> I've had this for like a year or, or longer, just waiting to be um, reviewed. And last but not least, well of these options, here we go, this is a Matsui single malt. This is a Mizunara cask. Um, I have been waiting for my opportunity to be able to afford a Mizunara cask. Um, I don't know what kind of age this is. I'm assuming it's a three year. So because of the way Mizunara works, it's not been in the cask long enough to really make a big, big difference. Um, but this is a Japanese whiskey that's unchill filtered and uncolored and it's a single malt. Um, so I'm very, very interested to know what's going on in that bottle. So, these here are the options. Don't break the bottle. Port Charlotte, Isla Barley. North Star, that's a Loch Lomond, right? Yeah, Loch Lomond 14. Edredar Caledonia, that's a 12 year, Red Breast 12, Cask Strength, Bunnahabin, Stuvridur, or the Matsui Mizunara Cask. Which do you think I should shoot first for 2023? Thirsty work. Oh, so good. Hey guys, if you can find one of these, get it so good so um that's all she wrote thanks for hanging out with me for this little sum up whiskey of the year blah 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 video um as i always say if you like what i'm doing please do the following three things one comment down below which of these do i do next two Share this video, that helps me more than you could possibly imagine. And three, leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, that's all right. Leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys.